Hi everyone, and thanks for joining into this workshop. My name is Orkan, I'm a hardware developer at the Things Industries, as you can probably tell from my background. Uh, in today's session, we are going to uh, delve into some of the advanced features of the generic node, which were introduced in the previous session. Uh, I will also do some power consumption measurements in active and deep sleep modes, and I will also touch the reasoning behind some of the design decisions that we made along the way. So, here we go, let's get started. All right, uh, here we are on the bench, and let me just briefly walk you through the, the setup here. Here we have a bench power supply set to 3 volts and 300 milliamps output current which goes into the dual scope here. And with the dual scope, we'll be using it for uh, to analyze the voltage and current going into the generic node at higher precision. And um, to program the generic node, we'll be using the ST-Link V3 with a standard jumper cable, as you can see. And uh, first we'll, we'll do the active power measurement and then we'll do the deep sleep in the stop modes with the RTC enabled. And, and then we'll see the figures and uh, based on those figures we'll do the battery life estimation. For so here's our setup. On the left hand side we have our UI interface for the measurement device. On the right hand, right -hand side we have the STM32 Cube IDE. We will open the cube examples for the STM32WL and we will pick the uh, stop mode 2 example with the RTC enabled. These examples are actually for the nuclear board but it will uh, perfectly work, uh, most of them at least, will work with the generic node as well. So we open the main file and we build the project and hopefully there are no errors. And once it builds, we can go into the debug mode. And uh, on the left-hand side, you can see during the flashing, the, the current consumption changes. And we run the device. And as you can see, in active mode, three, uh, 23 milliamps. And it goes down to 1 milliamp. Um, so we will remove the debugger first, because that also consumes some um, current over the UART lines and we will do a uh, power cycling to the device so we can get a clear indication of the energy consumption. Here you can see it's consuming around 22.6 milliamps then it goes uh, drastically down to 1.8 microamps. So right now the device is in uh, a stop mode 2 with RTC enabled and as you can see it's only consuming 1.8 microamps which is really good for a lower one node and the device can also periodically wake up uh, based on a, a predefined time and transmit uh, LoRaWAN packages. Here we have another example with our own uh, LoRaWAN uh, demo code. So uh, you can see those peaks, those are actually periodic wake-ups. Um, uh, right now I will do a reset to get a clear state. Right now the device is sending a join request and it joins to the, the nearby TTN network. And you can see the... Uh, it's By the way, it's using 14 dBm output power right now. And you can see the, the current waveforms and the current consumption for the TX is was around 55-60 milliamps. Right now, the device is sending packets uh, every minute. Uh, so to get the clear indication of the current consumption, I'll remove the uh, debugger and also do a, uh, later on we'll do a power cycle to it. So uh, right now, the, the UART is also enabled and uh, because of the logging, you can see it's consuming around 160 uh, microamps. Uh, we'll take a clean shot of a window uh, to get uh, average current for the uh, wake up, for the TX, join request and the TX, and then going back to sleep. And then we will use those figures to later calculate the estimated battery life. 
So I uh, will wait a bit until the window uh, clears up. Right, here we are, um, and we'll get the average current figure here from here, which is around 7.2 milliamps. Then we will uh, input that va those values uh, to our battery estimator tool. Right. So uh, based on the values we have measured with the dual scope, let's input those values into one of the uh, IoT battery life calculators and then get the uh, estimate, estimated battery life with two AA's. So for example, we've seen that uh, the code execution time was around three seconds. So we will roughly include five seconds. And if we say that uh, if we send a package, a lower one package every 10 minutes, then that's going to be a sleep time of uh, 595 seconds. Uh, in the active mode, in the, in the execution mode, uh, the average current was around uh, 7.2 milliamps, um, including one LoRaWAN uh, packet transmission. And uh, in the sleep mode, we saw that it was around 1.8, but we will we'll say it's roughly 2 microamps. And a typical uh, AA battery, for example, is Energizer 1. At, uh, it has a different um, capacity ratings for different discharge current. So we will roughly take 100 milliamp, uh, basically this figure, so it's, it's roughly around 2.5 uh, amp power. So we're going to say it's 2,500 uh, milliamp power and uh, around roughly 20% discharge rate. So based on these figures, we get around 1,344 days, which is roughly three years. Uh, that is every 10 minutes, so one packet every 10 minutes. If we say that we say we send one packet every uh, one hour, uh, every hour, then that's going to be um, 3,595 seconds of uh, sleep time. And that's, wow, 6,900 days, that's many, many years. Even the, the self-discharge of the battery will, battery will be drained way before than that. So uh, as you can see, um, the generic notes, the, the power measurement uh, figures shows that it's a very low power device and uh, it can, it can uh, work mm, for many, many years with just two AA batteries. So now we have looked into the different operating modes of the SOC, which provides real extremely low power modes for our operation. But there are even uh, other techniques to uh, save the power. For example, when we started the design, uh, we've carefully picked each and every component to be uh, as low power as possible, while also providing some versatility for the system. Um, one of those decisions was to include load switches. So there, there is one dedicated load switch for the sensors and the other one for the flash, um, both of which are controlled with the GPIO pins from the microcontroller. And for example, if you are uh, doing a firmware over the air updates and when you don't need the sensors, you can completely cut the power to the sensors and only enable the external flash and vice versa. Um, this is one power saving techniques and the other one is um, there's a nice uh, app note from ST um, this is AN4899 uh, which goes into the uh, some GPIO configurations for the low power mode um, here are some software guidelines to follow uh, basically it says that uh, unused GPIOs must be uh, configured as analog inputs and if the GPIO is being used it has to be tied to either VCC and ground. Um, for most of our cases uh, is, the ground is more preferable because um, the devices are uh, active high. And with that uh, you can save quite a bit of uh, power and extend the battery life of your device. We have also used uh, TCXO and that uh, TCXO gets the power from the GPIO pins and it is only enabled whenever there is a radio uh, transmission happening. 
Now let's take a look at the mechanical design files in the FreeCAD. So here we can see the, the complete the render of the generic node. Let's do a nice rotation here. And uh, let's remove the top side, the bottom side of the enclosure, and the uh, and, uh, rubber gasket, and plus the screws. So here is how it looks. Uh, as you can see, the design is really tightly packed inside the enclosure and there's um, not much room available to add any expansion uh, board inside inside the enclosure. But, um, so, we also mentioned that in a previous workshop that there's a nice convenient quick connector here. This one, where you can add uh, I squared C based um, sensors. Either you can design your own or you can use a pre made one, either from SPACFON or Adafruit. We also have a standard um, 2.54 millimeter uh, pin header sockets here, which will come with the device unsoldered. And those um, actually allows you to add uh, some expansion capabilities to the device, but not inside the enclosure, only outside the enclosure. So basically, if you really want, by compromising the water tightness of the device, you can drill, um, you can cut two slots here and here, and basically solder those uh, pin headers uh, on the back side of the or the top side of the enclosure, and then you can develop. Uh, I will um, include the mechanical dimensions um, between those pin headers. So um, uh, it's a standard dimension uh, with mills. So you can um, design a simple PCB which plugs in front of your device. And that will be a proper uh, add-on for the device. And of course that uh, blocks the access to the button and the RGB LED, but you can uh, include another button and RGB uh, LED on top. All right, uh, with this short mechanical overview, uh, I would like to complete our session. I really hope that it gives you some more insight into the device's capabilities. We'll definitely come up with more uh, materials, more explanatory videos uh, about the use cases for the device after the conference. So stay tuned for those in our YouTube channel or on, also on our website. Uh, if you have any questions uh, right after the session, you can all, uh, ask me on the Q&A uh, section or uh, you can also address those in forums and on our social media channels. So thanks everyone again for watching and uh, hope to see you very soon. Bye.